Welcome back to Harbaugh. Colin Powell, General Colin Powell, wasn't the only Republican to jump ship on Sunday. Philadelphia Inquirer readers opened up their Sunday paper to find Michael Smirconish offer this quote, John McCain is an honorable man who has served this country well, but he will not get my vote. For the first time since registering as a Republican 28 years ago, I'm voting for a Democrat for president. With us now, Michael Smirconish. Thank you, Michael, for joining us. I, I was taken by your consistency, sir. Since you and I began talking about 9-11 a long time ago, you've had a focus, a bee in your body, if you will. Get the guys who did it. You hold true to the original mission of the American people outlined by our president to get the people that did what they did to us 9-11. You have said, I want a president who's going to go get Osama bin Laden. Talk about it, because it's in your eyes. I've been on this. I've been on this. I've been on this case for three plus years. I've been writing about it in the Inquirer and the Philadelphia Daily News incessantly, talking about it on my radio program constantly, and talking about it here on Hardball. So much so, Chris, that my own audience in Philly are a little tired of hearing me address it. But here's the reality. It's seven years post-September 11. Al-Qaeda has reconstituted itself in the Fatah region of Pakistan. The two individuals most responsible for 3,000 deaths on September 11 are still at large. We've outsourced the hunt for bin Laden and Ayman al-Zawahiri to Musharraf and Pakistan to the tune of $11 billion, and they haven't done squat. And nobody talks about it, and that's number one on my list. I've interviewed Senator Obama about this issue three different times, and I've interviewed Senator McCain, and on this issue and in a number of other issues, I think it's Obama who has the superior answers and plan. Let's take a look at uh, General Powell, who spoke yesterday, the same day you issued your, uh, your mandate, your manifesto. Here he is, General Powell, on Meet the Press. It's got to be one of the most important Meet the Presses in a long time. Here he is talking about why he's backing not McCain, his colleague of many years, but the man he's gotten to know, Barack Obama. In the case of Mr. McCain, I found that he was a little unsure as to how to deal with the economic problems that we were having. And almost every day there was a different approach to the problem, and that concerned me. It's got the sensing that he didn't have a complete grasp of the economic problems that we had. And I was also concerned at the selection of Governor Palin. She's a very distinguished woman, and she's to be admired. But at the same time, now that we have uh, had a chance to watch her for some seven weeks, I don't believe she's ready to be President of the United States, which is the job of the Vice President. And so uh, that raised some question in my mind as to the judgment that Senator McCain made. You know who he looks like? He looks like the President of the United States, doesn't he? I'm sorry. If we had some good casting, Micah, we'd pick him. Uh, if I were a Hollywood producer, I'd say get him to play the president in the next movie. And now that we may have an African-American president for the first day, may have, maybe that won't be such a surprise when a guy like Morgan Freeman does get to play the president. Your thoughts about this, the Palin, because you and I know that, that Governor Palin has been incredibly appealing as a candidate. She's drawn huge crowds, and not just in rural conservative areas, but also in areas around Pennsylvania and places in the Northeast. A lot of regular people like her. They just like her. What's going on here? Why is she appropriate or not appropriate in terms of the judgment of this guy, uh, John McCain? I think the answer is inappropriate. When she was selected, I, I, uh, I was shocked. I thought the resume is way too thin for her to be a heartbeat away. And then I was in the hall in St. Paul when she delivered those remarks, and she wowed me with her speech. But now the dust has settled. And, and Chris, I'm just not comfortable, A, with the vetting process that Senator McCain undertook in order to make his selection, and B, she hasn't convinced me that she's ready to step into that role. Now, maybe that's the fault of the McCain campaign. Maybe it's the fault of the McCain campaign campaign for the way in which they rolled her out so carefully. You know, they kept her in a papoose, for goodness sakes, and they yeah. only allowed select media to question her. But, but, you know, we're at war on two fronts. The economy is in shambles, and I just don't think that she has convinced the American people that she should be a heartbeat away. She's great for the base, but she's done nothing for independents and moderates. I want to bring up uh, General, uh, we've had enough of General Powell. I want to talk, in a moment, I want to bring up what Rush Limbaugh said. But I, before I do that, I want to bring up this question, the role of a vice president. You and I are students of the Constitution. It has two roles for the vice president, one of which is ceremonial, basically, tiebreaker and presiding officer of the U.S. Senate. That's sort of become incidental, except in those rare moments when one vote matters. But the other role is to stand ready, to be in the ready room, the understudy, if you will, for the presidency of the United States. You've got to be there if something bad happens, an injury, an illness, or the death of a president. 
I thought General Powell made it clear today. I want to know your view. The, ro the job of the vice president is to be ready momentarily to be president. Is that a fair estimate under normal circumstances that they have to be ready? That it's not a job training program. It's not an assistant president program or deputy. But you've got to be ready to be president if you're going to be vice president. Is that too rigorous a standard? What do you think? Not, not at all. And look, John McCain was dealt a good genetic hand. His mother's alive. She's doing well. He looks good. But the reality is he's 72 years old and he's been battling melanoma. Chris, when the Palin selection was, was, was named, when that was announced, I was watching MSNBC at a breakfast counter leaving Denver. And I looked up at the television set and I saw it's Governor Sarah Palin. I then went back to my USA Today. I'll never forget this. And Ken Duberstein, who had been Ronald Reagan's chief of staff in the waning days of the Reagan administration was right. quoted in that day's newspaper saying this is a time for a selection of someone who is ready immediately to step in there day one and mm. I thought there's a disconnect between my television set and what I'm reading from Duberstein yeah and, and Ken was a guy who was with Re Ronald Reagan right to the very end with him every single day he knows the reality of the job let's take a look at one of your uh, competitors right. here's Rush Limbaugh uh, I know he comes on in the afternoon but he's on the radio here he is talking about Powell's endorsement you know, I don't despise Rush Limbaugh. I like him, actually, personally, when I'm with him. But i got to tell you something. I think you're in the trouble when you do what he did today. Now, back to General Powell. Uh, I, I, I just want to button this up because the drive-bys had a tizzy over my allegation that his nomination was about race. It, well, let me say it louder. And let me say it even more plainly. It was totally about race. The Powell nomination or endorsement total, totally about race. You know, I could put my two hands together and I could say in that fashion that Russia's support for John McCain is totally about race. I don't know how you get into this tribalist talk. We can make all kinds of assumptions, but we have no knowledge of a person's inner beliefs. You know, Colin Powell's a Republican. He could have come out for McCain and we wouldn't have been shocked. We would have said, well, I guess he's a Republican. All kinds of motivations move people, white or black. To assume that a black person has only one motivation, I think is a dangerous leap of faith or something else. Anyway, that's my thought. Generally, I'm not going to go after Rush. But anyway, your thoughts. My thoughts are as follows. I was stunned yesterday sitting on my sofa and watching Tom Brokaw question General Powell. And when it came to the $64,000 question, Colin Powell spoke, Chris, for six and a half minutes without notes. It was an impassioned case that he made for Senator Obama, not race-based. I think it was all substantive in nature. And, and, and I respectfully, I think that that soundbite really is a disservice to General Powell and to his service to this country. And what I'm most horrified about are the emails that I am now receiving, which are lumping me together with General Powell, a man who's worn the uniform for this country. I have not. And saying, some really hurtful things about him and besmirching his service. It's not right. It may drive the base. It's not going to win this election. You know what drives me crazy when somebody says, well, I know you're Catholic, so you must believe this. Or I know you're Jewish, you must believe this. Or I know you're black, you must believe this. Give us all a break, Rush. Let us think. Let us think. Let us decide. Thank you, Michael Spurconish. And by the way, agreeing with you on the big one coming up this week, go Philly.